National crime syndicates are plundering South Africa. Let us find out who the biggest looters are. We speak to Yusuf Abramji, the founder of Tax Justice South Africa. Welcome, Yusuf. Hello, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Chris. Who are the biggest culprits? Well, I don't, I don't know how much time you have, but uh, it's a long <laughs> list of people. Uh, when we talk of uh, organized crime, uh, that's exactly what it means. It means that these people are so organized that they're making billions of rares annually. Uh, and organized crime takes different forms. So whether you're talking of cash and transit robberies, whether you're talking of uh, business robberies, whether you're talking of the illicit trade, uh, which we're focusing on largely at Tax Justice South Africa, whether you're talking about fraud, etc., uh, there are different facets of organized crime. Specifically on the illicit trade, um, we've been making a noise about the illicit cigarette trade, the illicit alcohol trade, the illicit uh, trade in pharmaceutical and other products over many, many years. And Tax Justice is a non-profit organization. As a non-profit organization, if we've raised our voice over and over again. We know, for example, Chris, the smuggling of uh, cigarettes from Zimbabwe into South Africa, especially when uh, during the COVID lockdown, reached its peak. And that has not uh, uh, gone down. In fact, it's just escalated. These criminals are looting South Africa of millions and millions of rents every day. Uh, there's very little law enforcement. Our poorest borders are a problem. Uh, and the money is going right in the pocket of these criminals. And we are really concerned. And we have made repeated calls uh, on government, especially on the illicit secret trade, to say, when are you going to act? You might remember Al Jazeera uh, in an expose just a few weeks ago, focused on the so-called gold mafia. And they highlighted money laundering, the illicit trade, uh, the gold smuggling, and so on. And unfortunately, we get the feeling that there's very little action by government, and government seems to be uh, taking a back seat when it comes to fighting, especially organized crime relating to the illicit trade. How have you seen this escalate over the years? Well, it's no secret. Uh, you go to your corner cafe, wherever you are, whether you're in Johannesburg, Cape Town, Pretoria, or a rural area, you'll find how openly and brazenly a packet of 20 cigarettes are is being sold for anything from 5 rand to 10 rand to 12 rand, and yet the minimum collectible tax, for example, on a packet of cigarette, cigarettes is just over 23 rand. So these criminals are doing it openly. In fact, uh, I challenge sales to say just a few meters from your headquarters in Pretoria, we'll show you how the cigarettes are being sold openly, and, and yet uh, it's still happening. So these criminals are doing it uh, in supermarkets, in cafe stores, in spaza shops, uh, because these products are being manufactured uh, uh, undercover, uh, and these people are not paying their taxes. When we talk of billions of rands, I mean, the last estimate was around 20 billion rand, if not more. That figure is going up each and every day. And we have made repeated calls on, on government, specifically South African uh, Reserve, uh, Revenue Service, to say, put mechanisms in place at, for example, the cigarette factories, uh, CCTV cameras, and yet uh, some of the manufacturers, uh, and you can guess why, are opposing CCTV cameras. Uh, we say put a mechanism in place, have full-time inspectors, etc., etc., and yet very little is being done. So as much as government claims that they are fighting the illicit trade, we need to see more action. And yes, there have been some, uh, some uh, inroads, there have been some strides made, but we firmly believe not enough. How could the new tobacco bill actually help illicit cigarette barons loot even more? Well, they're going to make them even richer. If you think yeah. that the uh, illicit cigarette uh, the people involved within the trade uh, are rich, let me assure you when this new bill, if it becomes law, we are in serious trouble. They are going to be lining the pockets of these criminals more than ever before. We know that, uh, for example, the uh, some of the suggestions within this uh, new bill is that uh, there needs to be a plain packet of cigarettes, no branding, etc. Can you imagine what a field day those people are going to have? Uh, aside from that, um, if you look at uh, the some of the uh, proposals in this new bill, they're talking about banning cigarettes in public places. And you know what happened, Chris, during the COVID lockdown, when there was a total ban on cigarettes for three months, these criminals were operating more than ever before, they became richer more than ever before, and yet the courts found 
that that particular ban was totally unconstitutional and illegal. Uh, and that, that is the truth. So I would like to see how this new bill with all the constitutional tests eventually, uh, if our lawmakers decide that they're going to accept it. And I'm sure that within the lawmakers, there are people who are reasonable people, who, are, uh, who have a clear mind to say that you cannot simply push this bill through with all the many uh, uh, issues that, that they have raised. For example, uh, if you break some of the laws, you could go to jail for up to 15 years. I mean, where do you see ever that ever happening? Um, it, it's really totally ridiculous, and we believe this bill would have much impact um, on on the on the innocent cigarette trade and those people involved with this trade uh, who continue to run and mock in our country. So, what can South Africans do to try and stop that bill? Well, I, I saw an advert in a Sunday newspaper yesterday. I think we need to raise our voices. I think civil society needs to stand up. Uh, I'm I'm, an, I'm not a smoker, by the way. Uh, and I, I'm not fighting for the tobacco industry, but I think people that smoke, it's their right to smoke. Uh, they know the health hazards uh, and they need to raise their voices. If you are a smoker, for example, and you believe this bill is going to be to your disadvantage, raise your voice, sign petitions, let your local lawmakers know that um, you are against this particular bill. How do we ever allow uh, a bill to become law uh, if it's unconstitutional, if there are uh, aspects in there that it appears some people are just pushing through for whatever political reasons they may be, we are in serious trouble. And we know that crime is a problem. We know that these criminals are running amok. We know that the crime statistics over and over show, Chris, uh, what a high level of violent crime we have. White collar crime is on the increase. Money, money laundering is going up by the, by the day. These criminals are making money. And are we going to sit back and allow them to make more, more money? Surely not. I think time has now come for us as South Africans to raise our voices, to show our anger, and to show that uh, we are opposed to this type of thing. When last did we see a big crime lord uh, on trial? I mean, I can't remember. Can you, Yusuf? Well, a very good question. I think, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, inroads have been made, but I think when it comes to the major kingpins involved mm-hmm. in these industries, uh, mm-hmm. They are continuing to make money. The runners are being arrested, and in the same way, it's a cigarette trade. The guy who drives the truck uh, for his masters, he gets arrested, he gets a jail term, or he gets a fine. We know it, cashing traffic robberies, for example, the guy involved on the ground simply get arrested. But when it comes to the kingpins, they continue to, mm-hmm. to enjoy their freedom. And that is the problem. You might remember years ago when we had the SS forfeiture unit. They made great strides when William Hofmeyer was in charge of mm. that particular unit within the National Prosecuting Authority. But uh, recently, we, we haven't even seen major seizures being made. Uh, on the gold mafia expo there by Al Jazeera, President Ramaphosa told Parliament just a few weeks ago in response to a question from a, a parliamentarian that he promises action. Have we seen action? No, we know these things take time. We know it takes months, but surely... Government and, and the authorities, specifically the Revenue Service, the Reserve Bank and the police, were aware of this lawlessness years ago, long before Al Jazeera came with the expose. Why are these people still allowed to operate their cigarette factories, to operate their other uh, gold operation without any implications? Surely something is wrong. Surely something stinks. And surely there needs to be action. And I think uh, uh, when you ask the question, when was the crime lord arrested? Uh, Again, I think uh, we need to uh, look at that and, and ask the question, why are they still enjoying their freedom? Mm-hmm. To what extent are corrupt cops and corrupt politicians enabling these crime bosses to stay in power? You know and I know who they are. Uh, we, <laughs> we know that they're still enjoying their freedom. I've gone uh, on social media just a few months ago and I showed pictures of a, of a senior policeman allegedly escorting uh, trucks with illegal cigarettes in Limpopo and in Umadanga. They promised to be an investigation. They promised to be an arrest. And up to today, I've heard nothing further. Um, I don't have to mention politicians' names. You know who they are. You know who some of their best friends are. You know who funds them. And yet nothing happens. So I think that's a major problem. Um, and that is why, um, you know, even when it comes to the illicit cigarette trade, and those particularly involved in the cigarette trade, uh, they need to raise their voices uh, because... Uh, I think the, the, the corruption that we are seeing within government ranks, within uh, ranks of civil servants and politicians, is something that we all need to be very, very worried about. But what could we do about it, Yusuf? 
Well, uh, I think all we can do is put pressure on government. We need to raise our voices. We as civil society you can, need to speak up. We need to put pressure on government. And again, I think whistleblowers need to come forward. But more importantly, these whistleblowers need to be protected. We know the risk of becoming a whistleblower. Your life is at risk. People are scared. People come to me all the time and say, I've got information about this particular person, that particular company, but I'm scared. So there's no assurance from government whether it is the NPA, whether it's the police and other authorities, to protect these whistleblowers. Well, they need to come forward. Um, it's good to arrest the small runner, the guy on the street, the guy involved in the petty crimes, but we must get to the ringleaders. And very often, these syndicates have international and continental links. Um, and we know exactly how many billions of rands, for example, was taken out of South Africa uh, under this guy's uh, under the radar, bank officials were involved. You might remember, again, with the Al-Jazeera expose, they named some of the bank officials, they took bribes, um, and yet uh, we, we haven't seen those uh, bank officials being arrested. And again, I call on those banks, and you know who you are, is to say, tell us exactly what you are doing and why have your staff members were involved in this money laundering corruption with the Ill uh, illicit cigarette people not being arrested. Why, why are you protecting them? Surely we need answers. Indeed. Uh, Yusuf, you are somebody who keeps a keen eye on crime in South Africa. What can you tell us about the recent torching of trucks? Well, there again, you know, when you look at the lawlessness and the brazen criminality, uh, we have something to be worried about. Whatever the motive is, you might remember I even tweeted a photograph of a, a truck driver being forced off out of his truck, the truck in satellite, that particular person was arrested. That is economic sabotage. We know that the industry, uh, the 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 trucking industry have raised their voices, the business industry have raised their voices. We know that the, the trucking industry is pivotal to our economy and to our salvation. And yet, these criminals continue to run amok. Uh, the Minister of Police and the National Commissioner, yes, 20 arrests have been made. But surely, uh, where was crime intelligence in the first place, before the first truck was set alight? Uh, perhaps they're still snoring. We know crime intelligence has been sleeping for years. And surely when this type of thing happens, we need to be very, very concerned. Uh, and I think government does not have a grip on the situation. They mm. keep, on, keep on jumping from pillar to post. When there's a crime, they'll jump, they'll go to the crime scene and the politicians and the police heads will make a big noise and address the media to say we're going to do A, B and C. But yes, these things happen over and over again. The same with the mass murders we've had. The same with all the other serious crimes we've had. The, uh, long before these trucks were even set alight just over a week or two ago, there should have been action taken. And yet, after the first truck was set alight, we've seen scores of trucks being set alight. And, and really, I think this type of thing hampers economy, uh, our investment into South Africa, it hampers our economy, uh, and it really troubles us to see that this lawlessness can continue uh, right in broad daylight and very little action is taken. Indeed. Thank you very much. That was Yusuf Abramji the founder of Tax Justice South Africa and a long-time crime fighter. Thank you very much.